where it actually made sense to me was kind of later in life. I always loved film and would go to my my mom raised me and I think even at an early age, maybe before I should have been in certain films, she would take me to the theater and we would always talk about them afterwards. And um, so I've always loved going to the movies and watching films with family and stuff like that. But later in life, I think after I did, um, I had a job in advertising where I worked for like three and a half years um, out of college and kind of decided it wasn't the right thing for me and started taking film courses in my spare time um, and really wanted to learn, like, how to shoot movies. So I bought a camera and started, like, filming stuff on the weekends with friends or when I went to parties and stuff like that and then decided that maybe I should take some time off of this job and um, just start working on sets. So I started looking into that and, like, working on sets for free just to learn how to I guess, become a DP because that's the role that interested me the most because I had a background in photography and art history. Even when you were, um, when you were indulging in photography uh, in your background, did you feel that the kick you got out of photography was, was the same as cinematography, essentially telling a story with with an image or with a series of images? No, I think, I'm not sure. I, I never really had the conversation with, many other people but it's it's so very different um and i i guess previously i I realized that it wasn't as fulfilling so i was looking for something more like i would take pictures and um i love taking pictures but um it just naturally evolved into cinematography because of my love for film and, and going to the movies and kind of wanting more to the story or wanting to figure out more than just maybe one still image um mm. And maybe that sparked the interest of kind of learning, like, well, what does a cinematographer do? Like, what's behind the camera? You know, what does that job mean? And figuring that out. But, um, I mean, I still indulge in photography, and I love it, and I take pictures all the time on my sets and, um, you know, wherever I go. But it's, it's definitely not the same as shooting a film or a movie. But there are, I mean, I think of someone like uh, Stanley Kubrick who started out in photography, and I'm sure Kubrick could have easily been a master cinematographer himself had he not gone into directing. But but you can see, uh, in terms of his framing, you can see definite similarities between his photography and, and his film work. I mean, do, do mm-hmm. you see do you see kind of um, through lines in terms of how, how you view things are there are there similarities that you see? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I even seeing like how my work has evolved as a cinematographer, um, the way that I photograph things is very similar. And you know, just looking at even you know if it's not if there isn't the script behind it or a treatment or creative behind it, it's my sense of framing and, and composition is very similar to how I first started and who inspired me back then as, you know, what photographers inspired me and kind of what I've taken from them. And um, So, yeah, there's definitely a through line, I think. Um, but now it's just the yearning for those characters to kind of speak and what's the story behind them and all of that, I think, that was the natural progression. But there's definitely a through line for sure. Did, and you got your master's from uh, from AFI, correct? Yes, I went to AFI, and I think... So that's kind of after I worked in advertising. I worked in advertising, and um, you know, and when I was speaking to at that point, I decided that I wanted to learn more and go back to school and figure this job out as a cinematographer. I took that break, and the first thing that I did was work mostly on AFI sets. Is kind of what happened. Um, luckily, is you know, a lot of those people that are doing thesis films and other projects need help, so they were very open to me coming in and kind of taking any role and. And then the more people you meet, the you know more sets you get to work on. So before I went to AFI, I was very familiar with the system and knew a lot of students there, and they helped me out and met people in the program. So um, I definitely was a fan prior to going there, and then applied, obviously, and, um, and that's kind of that. That's how that progression happened. So when you when you get out of AFI, uh, having come from the world of advertising, I'm sure you're you're looking to work on more features professionally 
Um, so mm-hmm. what, what was that? What was that process like? Were there were there contacts that you made through AFI that helped pave the way for that? Or yeah, definitely. I had a, a kind of unique experience while at AFI. In between our first and second year, um, a group of us uh, that were very tight that I actually made my thesis film with ended up um, deciding to take that summer off between first and second year and shoot a feature. Um, okay. And uh, we shot a feature. It's called Macho, and ISC ended up purchasing it after, I think, shortly after we graduated, maybe, um, and distributed it. And um, so I, before I left AFI, I already had a feature under my belt, and we shot it on 35, and it was kind of a small, intimate film. And, um, you know, so going out after graduating, I kind of, had that experience to bring with me and, you know, something on my plate to say, here, look, this is what I've done. And obviously along with your thesis film and some other projects that you had done there. But um, definitely I'd say, you know, who you meet there and the friends that you make have definitely helped me um, progress and uh, meet more people and get more work. And a lot of work comes from recommendation. And it's such a great program for meeting people. And they do a fantastic job of selecting the right people to go along with each other and learn from each other. Um, so it's a very big part of, you know, my life as a cinematographer. And I actually, my husband's a VP, and I met him there. And so obviously that was very important. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you mentioned that you shot Macho in 35. Do you do you have an opportunity nowadays to shoot very much film? Um, I'd say recently, no. But um, I started out shooting film. I mean, everything, you know, I always, it's, I don't, so I guess some people on, um, their sites will put what format they shot. I don't do that, and I don't think it's never been recommended to me, but um, a lot of the stuff, you know, that from early on has always been 35, so my understanding of what an image should look like is very much film. Um, And even though now I shoot mostly digital, it's I'm always trying to make it look like film, and not necessarily for, you know, the director or the producer or someone coming to me saying, like, look, make this look like film, and it's just part of my aesthetic, I think, um, to have that texture and that emo- emotive quality of the image. Um, but recently, the last stuff I shot on film was probably music videos. In 16, um, I did a Levi's campaign a couple of years ago, or a year and a half or a couple of years ago, that we shot on 35. That was an amazing project. And um, that, you know, I think was the last time that I really was able to kind of do something creative with it and, I ended up getting to work with Harris Savides on that project, and wow. that, so that that being my last my last kind of amazing film experience. Um, mm. what, what was it like working alongside Harris? Um, I, the project we did was the Levi's We Are All Workers campaign, um, and I work with Melody McDaniel, and um, we went out to Braddock um, and shot a lot of film out there, and took a few trips out there and um, she did one of the commercials and uh, Harris shot it and um, I did second unit on it. So, um, you know, I was able to kind of give him a call and meet him and figure out kind of what their plan was for the commercial. And since I was shooting um, second unit stuff when he wouldn't be there prior to him shooting his um, spot, you know, just making sure and discussing stocks and how he would be processing it or kind of his, um, feeling for the piece and just kind of going along with that and making sure stuff that I was going to be doing would work for him and Melody. Um, but it was great. I had met him prior to that once at AFI when he came to speak because a lot of the time people will come to AFI and speak, and which is great about that program, and you'll get to meet them afterwards. So, um, But, yeah, it, overall it was just a great experience going to Braddock and filming these real people. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the campaign, but... They used real people, some models, um, but it was an amazing project. The digital format has come a long way, and it's continuing to evolve at kind of a rapid pace, I would imagine. But it, are, mm-hmm. are there still things that digital can't do that you can only get from film? It's a, it's an interesting question. I mean, there's so many questions like that that go around these days, and you know, especially as a cinematographer, people want everyone's opinion about it. Um, my I always feel like I'm always trying to kind of, um, in projects I do, 
like I said prior, make it look like film or make it have personality or texture. I mean, obviously, I do commercial work too, and you know, some stuff should look sharper and sleeker. Um, but I lately have been very happy with the digital format and you know, kind of the results that I get with it and trying to make it look more filmic. And um, there's so many variables at play, like as far as like the cinematographer's eye. I mean, everybody's eye is different. Everybody's way of exposing is different. Your lens choice, the production design, the compositions. I mean, all of these come into play when you're talking about like, does this look like film or does this look like digital? Or someone asking you after the fact, was this film or digital? Um, you know, it's not a simple question. It's, well, I shot on the red, or no, I shot. I actually shot 35, or I feel like there's all these different variables and kind of figuring out how you how you do these things as a cinematographer will ultimately kind of, you know, how you respond to digital. All of those things have to come into play. You know what I mean? Yeah. Isn't there something kind of, I mean, it's almost indescribable, the, the, the feeling that you get, the kind of the dreamlike feeling you get when you watch film I mean, it could, uh, as a spectator, maybe it's something having to do with the, the chemicals involved or something, but there's, there's just something that's, that can't really be defined. No, exactly. I mean, it's, I always say, like, when I'm looking through the lens or depending on a commercial or a narrative or, it doesn't matter. If I don't believe it to be true, then I don't think anybody else will. That's just how I feel about it. Like, I on many you know many occasions have been there looking through the viewfinder and looking at the light and the exposure and how things are framed and the blocking and you know something's not right i can feel that and you know i take the steps needed to kind of fix that because i know that if i'm catching it my audience will be catching it you know or my director will see that and it's just very important for me to make it feel real and um believable and emotional so um i think growing up watching film and going in the theater and you know, um, you're right, it, it, that emotional quality and kind of how you respond to that filmic image, I mean, that stayed with me. And um, I think sometimes I can tell, you know, the difference. And, you know, maybe I kind of, it won't be as believable if it looks, you know, obviously if it looks too sharp or I, I really do see that it's a very digital image. Um, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Definitely. Uh, an, another big part of what you do, maybe the biggest part, um it, it, it is when you're working with various directors, you have to kind of be malleable, and you have to shape your mm -hmm. work to 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 fit their conception of of what they're doing. Um, mm -hmm. When was when was the last time you felt uh, like you were working outside of your comfort zone, and 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 what does that experience give you as an artist? Um. I mean, it happens. It happens to everyone. I, I think I've been lucky enough thus far to work with some amazing people, and obviously they see my work and they want me to come on the project and to kind of bring, um, you know, my style or whatever um, they've seen in my work that they that they like. But there are other jobs that you know um, you kind of have to like work together to kind of find a middle ground. Um, but I never really feel like. I mean, it. There's always challenges, so it's always like if even if I don't agree, it's, I'm my, it's my job, and I'm there to kind of make it work and and find a way to make the director happy or give him or her their vision. Um, and it may always not coincide with what I think is right or what I think looks good, but I think you know trying to figure out a middle ground to make them happy or introduce them to the idea of something new, which I think is always our job and 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 great. Um, because mm -hmm. they may not always have the best idea and, you know, being on your toes and thinking of new things or new ways of looking at things, maybe they'll say yes or no, but um, I think it's important to always introduce those things um, because that's what you're there for. And, you know, there was a conversation that happened recently, you know, sometimes, you know, a director will end up wanting to shoot it or maybe there are more director DPs out there, but I always feel like there's two heads are better than one, you know, obviously. On a very basic level, what do you have to understand about a project, whether it be a campaign or or a feature film or a short, uh, before you can start uh, mapping out the visual scheme of it? Um, I mean, it's for me. It starts with the director or the creative. You know, um, you you get sent a project. I, I think this is 
what you're asking. You get sent a project and you kind of, you know, read the treatment or figure out what your interest is in it and then have a conversation with him or her about it um, and just figure out kind of what um, what what the goal is, like whether it's a narrative project and there's a script and there's already, already that groundwork, um, you know, understanding the characters, where are we going to shoot, like what's the world like, um, how does these characters feel, and then if it's a commercial, I mean, obviously it's a lot different because there are boards and very specific things and, um, you know, first off I'll have a conversation if it's Say, for instance, it's commercial, just like what are your references for this? Like how should it look? Um, it's a little bit more cut and dry, I think, in that arena. But I think most of the commercials that I've been doing recently, um, they have more, like they're more stylistic, so it's kind of we're collaborating and finding the look together, but it'll start like with the, with the boards or an idea already or some kind of reference. Are all of your creative decisions... Uh, kind of based on uh, reinforcing whatever the theme of the project is? Um, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I'm very... It, I say, like, that cut and dry, that yes, but, um, I mean, I also feel like whenever... How, how I react to it emotionally plays a big role in like how I photograph it or what my where my ideas come from. Um mm-hmm. so definitely yes, I mean it starts with the theme and um all of that, but I think my first response and my gut reaction to you know, the script or the treatment or whatever, even if it's a music video or whatever, like that plays a big role. Like my whatever ideas come to you know, my head first and kind of um my inspirations and then sharing those with the director, seeing from the same, also on the same page. Um, but it very much for me is um, my first emotional response to something and what it makes me think of or kind of if where my interests lie in it. I mean, I generally try to take projects that I'm interested in and that, um, you know, inspiring, you know. It shows your latest project is Palo Alto, which is a, which mm-hmm. looks to be a feature film that the, uh, Gia Coppola and, and James Franco were involved in. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, we just finished that. Um, I work a lot with Gia, and we started principal photography last year in the fall, and we did some reshoots this spring. Um, I just finished final color correction last week, um, and it it was a project that her and James, James wrote a, a book of short stories called Palo Alto Stories, and she adapted that book into a screenplay. Um, and he was also um, obviously very much involved in the project, but he was also in the project and uh, as an actor. Um, but it was an amazing experience. It's something her and I have been working on for a while because um, we actually met while she was shooting some test stories for that project. Um, a friend of mine recommended me, and um, I ended up meeting her when we were just shooting like a test scene from the book one day. And that was a few years ago, and since then we've done, you know, most of our projects together. Um, so it's something that we started a long time ago, pre-pro, and it got pushed a few times. So we definitely um, have worked on it for a very long time. But it was an amazing project. Um, it's about kids growing up in the suburbs, and a lot of the actors that she brought on board were fantastic and all got along. And um, I'm very, was very impressed by them every day. Some of them were, you know, um, it was their first time acting and. They did a fantastic job, and um, she's great with actors and does a very good job of picking the right actor for the part. And I feel like with this script, that all fell into place, and um, I'm just really excited for people to see it. Before I let you go, uh, I, I like to ask this of all the all the DPs that we interview for the series. Um, if mm-hmm. you were to teach a class on cinematography and you were looking at the the history of the art form, what uh, what films would you choose to show your students to teach them various lessons on, on, on the art? Um, I think the first thing that comes to mind would probably be the films that inspired me to become a cinematographer because I, I definitely, you know, um, those stories are so close to me. So, uh, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Woody Allen and a lot of um, me. me my interest in the beginning was based off of films that I saw. Um, 
like Broadway, Danny Rose and Annie Hall and, um, you know, Manhattan. So, you know, he's been a big inspiration to me and obviously Gordon Willis. And so I think those films, and I remember seeing Raging Bull, probably one of the first films in one of my genre courses I saw. And that was a huge inspiration to me too. So, um, you know, kind of those films and the framing and, and how Woody Allen kind of block scenes and stuff, I've definitely brought that along in my work and um, characters being very important. It's starting on the page. I think it's very important to me. So I would definitely, in my class, that would be something that would be very important to communicate to a cinematographer. And um, without that, without kind of starting from the script and, and that being the most important thing, I'm not sure how we can do the, we can do our jobs, you know, because if it's, if it's not straight on the page and this, you know, you can't find the inspiration within that, it's very difficult to kind of do your job. Um, well, those are, those are really great uh, e- examples to show students because I, I mean, I recall Gordon Willis talking about Annie Hall and, or maybe Woody Allen was talking about it and, and everyone was asking, you know, you're just doing a comedy. Why are you? Why are you getting someone like Gordon Willis to shoot you? <laughs> to shoot your? Co- but you know, he, he's always kind of kind of pushed the uh, pushed the limits with the photography in his films, whether it's something like Annie Hall or or even something like Hollywood Ending that looks so fantastic mm-hmm. with the beautiful lush colors. And uh, I, I love the look of his films. Yes. I do too, and I like when I was speaking to my mom, taking me to the movies or showing me films, and I remember being really young watching Woody Allen films and not understanding them at all and wondering why my mom wanted to watch those because there's so much dialogue and so many jokes obviously I didn't really get um, at a young age, but it, it obviously inspired me. And, you know, it took a while for me to kind of understand that, and, you know, I, I like I said, I worked in art history, and I didn't kind of, you know, go into film until later in life. Um after you know, um, after college, but it, it definitely I think made an impression at a young age, and, and is probably one of the big reasons why I was more drawn to his films in the beginning. Um, yeah, and I I mean Gordon's work is amazing, and um, recently I did a short film that was just in Sundance this last year with a director who is um, a writer, and it was her first time directing, and she wrote um, Girl Most Likely. Um, the script oh, that yeah. just came out with Kristen Wiig and Annette Benning, and we did a short film um, called KIT. And one of the first things she said to me, she's like, you know, this is a comedy, but I, you know, I'm a big fan of Gordon Willis, and I don't want it to look like your typical comedy. You know, I don't want it to look bright and funny and and all that. And and she's like, and she came to me, and I, I generally my work I wouldn't say is like that. So she was looking for something different to kind of bring, and we obviously had very similar interests and. Um, I, I think those inspirations definitely found their way into this this film, and she was very happy afterwards. 